loads of people doing astrophotography with their phones now. It's amazing what they can do. So you want to do something that's going to set yourself apart just that little bit from what everyone else is doing because after all, if you've got a dark sky, a tripod and a modern smartphone, you're going to be able to get pretty good photos. So you want to do something that's a little bit different to stand out from the crowd and today I'm going to show you what I think is one of the more impressive things that you can do with a modern smartphone. This will work on iOS and it will work on Android phones as well. Let's have a look. What we are doing is panorama astrophotography. So most phones have a panorama feature in their photography mode. iPhones do it, Androids do it, Pixel, they all do it. And that is, you will normally hold the phone like this, push the button, move through the subject that you want to photograph, push it again sometimes, or some phones will just end automatically, and you'll end up with this nice, long, narrow photo. There are benefits to doing this, of course, doing that handheld panorama. It gives you a nice, broad view of what you've been looking at all day, but the downsides of that is that they print terribly, they look terrible because they're so narrow, and you can do a lot better. Doing those panorama photos is all well and good. I think they're a nice addition to some sort of travel photography and things like that. But you can't do that at night time. At night time, we need that longer shutter speed to capture all the stars that we want to put in this photo. So we're going to need a tripod. And the way we're going to do this is taking a series of photos like this, then bringing them all together all on the phone. When we talk about night photography and astrophotography with your phones, with that galactic core, you generally get it in a nice straight line because we're taking the one photo. But if we take multiple photos, when it is horizontal, take multiple photos, it will give a curve to that galactic core and it looks mint in so many photos. There is one big thing that's been going wrong with the iPhone 17. Hopefully, with a little bit of light, we'll get around that. That problem, of course, is the blurry star photos. It doesn't seem to make a massive amount of difference to touch it, don't touch for focus, touch for focus, or, or whatever. It just seems to be somewhat inconsistent. So I'm, I'm, my phone's on the latest version, it's still doing it. So the biggest spanner in the works of this here tonight is going to be if that iPhone blurs the photos out because I won't real I'll know about it at the time and I'll have to take it again. The stars are going to come out of alignment. It's it's going to be a bit of a pain. So hopefully it works. Now as far as the setup of all this goes, we're just going to use night mode uh, in the uh, iPhone camera. You obviously need a tripod, you need a phone holder um, and we're going to go up here into the, the dots here, get that 30 second live photo going. I'm going to take the central one, then I'm going to go kind of 45 degrees of where I am, then take a photo, overlap it by half, as in bring the camera across half of that frame again, another photo, half the frame again, another photo, and so forth, until we get to about 45 degrees the other side of the subject. All right, we've just taken the first photo, and there's too much light. I've got to turn these lights off. I'm going to take another photo, get a test done. If that's right, I'm going to then do the, the 45 to 45. I'll come back at the end. Really, really, really disappointed in this phone. With the, so let, let, what happened with this? Now every iPhone 17 has this issue. I was really hoping it was fixed with the latest update. I take one photo, it's absolutely perfect. Do absolutely nothing different, nothing, zero. Hit the shutter button again, I get a blurry photo. There is no consistency with this. Apple used to just work, I don't want to make a big deal about this, but I guess we're trying the Samsung. Look, if you, this will work absolutely, 100% will work. If you've got an iPhone and it's not a 17, because this is going to drive you nuts doing this, I've taken about 15 to 20 photos here, and two thirds of them are blurry. Doing nothing, nothing different. So it's working sometimes, it's not working another time. If you're, if you're doing astrophotography, don't bother buying Apple product at the moment. The 16 will work if you don't get the blue lines. If you do have the blue lines doing panorama photos, doing what we're doing here right now, the blue lines are going to show up a lot more than what you have before, just because of the nature of the stitching of the photos. But if you've got a 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11, go ahead and do this and it'll work awesome. Apple seem to don't, they don't know what they're doing with low light photography anymore. Anyway, let's try the Samsung. In the process of trying this so many times with the iPhone, I ended up thinking, well, I thought maybe the, the tree is messing with the focusing. 
So I came down here and just shot down the road. So I've got a panorama just going across the road maybe, doing the same thing. So this is where I've ended up shooting the, the uh, Samsung as well. As far as the settings go on the Samsung, let's go through that. All right, in the Samsung camera, we're just using pro mode in the camera. Go into more, go into pro, and these are the settings that I will use for this. Now, these settings, because it's a manual mode on this camera, you can change this to whatever your situation is. There's a fair bit of moon at the moment, it's probably about a third full, so there's a fair bit of light coming down for this sort of photo. So we're reducing a few things. The ISO leave it at 1600, shutter speed at 20. As far as focusing goes, I do multi-point focusing now. I'm finding that works pretty damn well with this. It gets good focus on the foreground, good focus on the background. And then we're doing exactly what I was talking about with the iPhone, as in straight down the road, go a couple of photos to the left for, until you get to about 45 degrees, a couple of photos to the right until you get to about 45 degrees, and job's done. Now this works the same now. This app that I'm going to show you works the same on iOS and on Android. This is called a uh, Bimo Stitch. I'm just using the light version here. I've got it on the iPhone as well, but let's, let's not harp on about that too much. Press here to get started. We're gonna go for some few photos here. We're gonna go with the six photos that I put there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll go done. And there it is processing the images. And this is across the road, so the, I'm hoping that the, there it is, the road is in the center of the photo. So you can see what this is going to do. That's the mechanics of it the process of doing it and the composition that you have will be dependent on what you're doing at the time. This will work during the day as well. The benefits of doing this versus your handheld uh, panoramas during the day is your print size. You're going to be able to print a much larger print by doing it this way. Other things with this Bimo Stitch and setting it up, it doesn't have to be a horizontal thing. You can, at different times of the year, with the Milky Way, when the galactic core is going straight up and down, like I think it might be in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. For us in the Southern Hemisphere, it's we've only got it for about an hour a night at the moment, and before it's gone, and then it'll be gone in about another week or so. But with the moon, uh, we're probably not going to get much more of it at all this year. <clears throat> but if it's a vertical one, you can shoot... Uh, horizontal photos like this all the way up and then stitch them together vertically and it'll work the same way. Over on our Facebook group, Shane Austin Photographer, Mobile Photography, Bloody Legends, something like that, I'll link it down the bottom there. Go ahead and join that group, great group. Lots of guys over there are doing panorama photos like this and they look mint. They look really, really good. It's definitely worth going to join that group and show, seeing what these other guys are doing with their panorama shots too. So buy my stitches the app and you can use the free version, which is light. I think it's going to give you a minimum, a maximum number of photos that you can put into there. And it probably is even going to watermark your image. Um, but if you pay for it, it's, I think I'm pretty sure it's a lifelong, um, uh, you, you buy it outright. And it's not a subscription is my point. And you've got it forever. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you next time.